Hey guys, this is Burgundy from Slip to Stitch Jane, and today I was going to show you my pattern for the HP Kitty Beanie. I really like this beanie a lot. It has nice little subtle cat ears on top. It looks just like a square when you have it flat, but as soon as you put it on, it'll stretch, and these little bits right here will stand up like little tiny cat ears. So you don't have to do the extra sewing in to like make them be pronounced. It's a very nice subtle cat ear hat. But it's very simple. It is basically a repeat through the body of the hat. And then you have like a little tiny repeat for the brim of the hat. But I really like it. Um, like I said, it's not too particularly hard. But we'll get straight into looking at the supplies. And then I'll walk you straight through steps on how to make it and finishing off. But we'll jump into the supply list. One moment. Okay, and the supplies you'll need will be a 6.5 millimeter hook. I am using mine in a boy ergonomic hook. And then you'll also need a medium for a worsted weight yarn. I use Brava, the worsted weight, and the acrylic yarn. And the one I'm using today is called Seraphim. Let me see if you can see it. Seraphim yarn. And I like the sturdiness of it, also this color. I'm just obsessed with this, like a nice dusty mauve color. Also, you're going to need a pair of scissors. And a tapestry needle to sew in your ends. So, basically yarn, scissors, the hook, and scissors in. But we're going to jump into the pattern, so one moment. Okay, and one of the first steps of this pattern is to create a slip knot. What I do is wrap the two, uh, the working yarn over the two fingers, and then I'll flip it around to where you can see two fingers like this, and then I grab the yarn in between fingers, and then pull the yarn through the loop that I've created on my fingers. It's, it's it was one of the difficult things for me to start off with. I'm not sure why. I used to like almost like knot it, but you want a slip knot. So say if you take it apart, you can just like pull it like that. But we'll make a slip knot and then you will chain 27. So what you do is just wrap the yarn over the hook and pull through that loop to leave a loop on the hook. So you'll chain 27. So that's one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. Okay, so once you have 27 chains on your hook, you will count back and double crochet into the fourth loop from the hook. So that's one, two, three, and four. You don't count what's on the hook. So you can see you do one, two, three, and then four right here. So to double crochet into that loop, you'll yarn over, insert your hook into the fourth chain, and it'll look something like this. Yarn over again. And then pull through one, the first loop. So you'll have three loops on your hook. And then you'll yarn over again. Pull through two. Yarn over. Pull through two. So you'll, you'll do that all the way around down the chain. So you'll do one in each chain across. So we'll do one more real quick. So yarn over. So yarn over. Insert your hook. into the next chain. Yarn over again. Pull through. So you'll have three chains on your hook now. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. And you'll want to go down the whole chain the whole chains you did into the end. And then we'll come back. Okay, so at the end of this round, you'll place your last double crochet into that last stitch. And then you'll yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, and pull through two. So at the end of this row, you'll have a total of 
25 stitches. This will include the chain 3 right here in the initial chain or double crochet into the fourth. It makes that little chain 3 right there that will count as a double crochet, but this will be the only place in the body of the hat that you're going to count a chain as a stitch. So from this point, you will just write it back up here, chain 2, and then turn your work. For this pat this part of the pattern from this row until I want to say row 25, yeah. Row 25, you'll double crochet in the back loop only. So when you double crochet in the back loop only, you'll be making double crochets, but only in this back stitch right here. So you won't go through both. You'll go through right here under that back V. So you'll have one little loop right here. Yarn over pull through so you'll have three loops yarn oval pull through two yarn over pull through two so you'll be doing that across this whole row right here so like I said you'll yarn over insert your hook yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two so you'll continue doing that down the row and place one in each stitch and just take your time. Um, honestly, sometimes I try to rush through it and then I'll just realize I need to like go at a steadier pace, especially with using a certain yarn and hook combination. Like if you want to get something really droopy and um, have a lot of drape to it. I tend to use bigger hooks for a uh, smaller yarn, but when working with that, sometimes the yarn gets caught up around the hook. But you just want to take your time and place a stitch in every stitch. And if you want, you can pause this and come back and pick it right back up, and I'll meet you at the end of the row. Okay, and when you come down to this last stitch, you'll get to that chain part right here. What you do is you'll just, just like the rest of the stitches, you'll locate that V stitch on the top, right there. And you'll make sure to go into the only the back loop. And it might take a second because it's kind of fidgety. So you'll yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And like I said, with this pattern, you'll be completing basically a repeat. So you'll turn your work chain 2 and turn your work and then place a double crochet back loop only in that stitch and repeat that all the way down and you'll repeat this same row row 3 through 25 until you have the body of the hat complete so if you want to pause this video and work up the body of your hat or just take a moment to you know get the stitch down and I'll meet you back at the end of row 25. So when you get to the end of row 25 you'll have a long panel like this. So what you're gonna do is chain one and fold your hat in half. So I'm gonna use this side. So I'll fold it in half. And then what you're gonna do to create the tube for the hat is you're gonna look on the side here. So like I said you chain one, you go through the back loop and then you insert your hook through that and then you go through over here or the chain the initial chains are and what you're gonna do is slip stitch it together so you're gonna slip stitch this whole panel together and what you're gonna do is try to line it up as even as you can and make sure you slip through slip stitch through every stitch in every chain one or chain my bad all the way up the hat and you're doing this so it it sews it together like you'll see right here but it also it doesn't leave a big ridge so that's why I like slip stitching up instead of um say single crocheting up it is because I don't like that having that big ridge and it feels like I'm using more 
yarn if I if I would single crochet up it. But if you go ahead and slip stitch up the whole side of this and I'll meet you back at the end. At the end of sewing up your tube, it should look something like this. So it's going to fit like a that. So it's going to be one complete tube. And so at now the next step is to flip the hat inside the right side out. So you'll see the outside of your hat, basically what's going to be seen. And see with that slip stitch, it's kind of keeps it looking like it is ribbed, but it's going to give a nice seam where this looks like it's folded in there. So the next step is, like I said, fold it right side out. And then you're going to just this. chain one. And then you're going to, as evenly as possible as you can get this, you're going to single crochet around the edging, which might be a little bit hard to begin with, but I just try to, like I said, I just try to keep it as even as I can. So I go into the side, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through both loops. And, like I said, you're just going to try to get it as even as you can. And, what I try to do for the best way to get my count even and to get it even, I try to do about two crochet, two single crochets into each side of the double crochets. So, like I said, you had 25 rows, so two into each side is going to equal you about 50 cro single crochets. So, if you just want to continue around and get it as even as you can, I will meet you at the end of the round. Okay, so when you get done with your 50 single crochets all the way around, you definitely want to double check and recount and make sure you have exactly 50 because it's really important. For the, the end rounds. So what you're going to do is slip stitch to the first single crochet and then chain three. Okay and in this part of the pattern that is going to count as just a chain three. So what you're going to do is double crochet into that same exact stitch. So you're going to yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over again, pull through. So you'll have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And so for this part of the pattern, you are going to place a double crochet in each single crochet around. So yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And you're going to do this, like I said, in each stitch around. So you have a total of 50, cro 50 double crochets at the end of the round. So if you want to pause the video and do 50, 50 double crochets around the hat, you can. And we can meet it back here at the end. Okay, and when you finish with all of your 50 double crochets around, um, to finish this round, you're going to make sure to double cro to slip stitch into the double crochet, the first one you made. Make sure not to do it in the chain three, but the double crochet. So you'll just slip stitch into there, and then chain two. Okay, for the next two rounds, you're going to count your chain two as a double crochet. So, this row is going to involve front post and back post double crocheting. So, like I said, the chain 2 is going to count as a double crochet in this row and the next. So, to begin, we count this right here. So, we will yarn over, go behind the next, not the first, but the second double crochet and come out the other side. So, you'll have that whole stitch on the front 
of your hook. You're going to yarn over. So, yeah, yarn over. Pull through. You're going to pull it behind. So you're going to have three loops on your hook. So this is going to be a front post. And then you yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And what the ways you're doing this is you're going to give that little bit of texture of a raised stitch. So your first front post double crochet. And then in the next stitch you're going to yarn over and then go behind your work, insert your hook to come up. And then put that stitch, the next double crochet, behind your hook. And then yarn over. And it'll look like this when you're doing it. You'll have that bump behind it. So you're going to yarn over, pull through. So you'll pull that yarn in front of that hook to the other side. And then you'll have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, so that's back post double crochet. So we're going to, into the next stitch, we're going to work another front post double crochet. So you'll yarn over, insert your hook behind the hook, or behind the stitch. Yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through two, pull through two. So what you're doing is creating a bumpy ridge to give it that nice, I want to say, ribbed looking brim. So we'll do the back post again. So you're going to yarn over, go behind your work, and then shove your hook beside the stitch. And then wrap your hook in front of the stitch and back through the other side. So you're going to basically have the stitch like this in the back. Then you're going to yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And you'll comp you will continue doing that pattern through it. So you're going to do, the next stitch is going to be a front pose and then back post and then front post along the whole brim. So if you want to continue working on that around, I'll meet you back at the end. Okay, so at the end of row 28, you will have the front post right here. And then so what you do next is you will slip stitch into the beginning of that chain, the top of the chain too. So make sure you look one, two, still slip stitch into the second. Okay, so for the next round, last round of 28, what you'll do is chain two, which counts as your double crochet. And then you'll continue to front post, double crochet, just basically the repeat of row 28. So what you'll do is yarn over, insert your hook behind that previous front post double crochet. So you'll have that whole stitch in front of it. And it'll, it'll be easy to find once you have the row previous. So what you'll do is yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So in the next stitch, this the row before, you will we'll yarn over, insert your hook to where you're in front of the last back post double crochet. Yarn over once, pull all the way through, which it can be hard to do sometimes. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So... As in the repeat of row 28, you will continue. So the next stitch will be a front post double crochet. So you'll yarn over, insert your hook behind that last front post from the row before. Yarn over, pull through. Do so you have three loops on your hook? Yarn over, pull through two, 
yarn over, pull through two. So as I was talking about in the previous row, you'll start seeing that bumped, ridged, ribbed effect from doing this to make your brim. So once again, we're going to do a back post double crochet where you yarn over, insert your hook like this through the back to go in front of the previous row's back double crochet and through the other side. So you'll have a stitch. So from the front it'll look like this, and from the back it'll look like this. So you'll yarn over, pull through, so you'll have three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So you're, gonna, you're going to continue this pattern all the way around, and you'll be alternating between it. So where you have a front post double crochet, you're going to put another front post double crochet like this. Yarn over, pull through, you got three loops, pull through two, pull through two. Where you have a back post double crochet, you're going to put a back post double crochet. So you're going to insert your hook to have that back post behind it. Yarn over, pull through, three loops, pull through two, pull through two. So if you guys want to meet me back here at the end, I'll show you how to finish it up and show you how to close the top. Okay, so at the end of row 29, we're going to slip stitch once again into the chain two. And what I like to do is I like to chain one at the end of whenever I'm finishing a project just to kind of keep it a little bit more snug in there. So what you're going to do next is trim, leave a tail, and you're going to cut off a decent sized tail. I like to do about two or three inches. Then pull securely to kind of knot it there. So like I said, once again, like say if you wash it and everything, it'll stay snug, won't come unraveled. And then you're going to get your tapestry needle, feed the yarn through the tapestry needle, and then you're going to weave that in and out. I like to weave a little bit toward the, the seam to kind of blend it in there. Also, the seam has like a lot of just like chains and slip stitches, so it's going to hold it a lot. I don't know like how much is behind that. That's all I've always done is like sewn it into the seam because it's already there and might as well just kind of like instead of adding any unknown texture to the rest of it. And so I just kind of sew it down in there. And then, let me see, I sewed it a little bit too far. Well, as you can tell I'm having a hard time seeing where it's at. And then at the very end of the tail I kind of take it and let me see let me feed it I feed it backwards through it to kind of overlap it and I don't want to cut off too much of a tail I guess it's better to have a long tail than not enough but after you've done a couple projects it kind of just kind of makes sense in how much to cut so I'll pull it to make sure the tail goes into where it needs to and what I do is locate the end of it cut it off as close to the stitch without cutting the stitch cut it off kinda pull it in a little bit of directions and make sure you can't see the tail and it's woven in good okay for the last part of this hat since we left both sides open so you have a tube what I do is you'll turn, take it and turn it inside out the wrong side again so you're working with the wrong side. And then I locate my seam and kind of have that focus in the middle. Let me move this up a little bit. And so right here's the seam. So I have that in the middle and I fold it in half to where you have basically a flat sandwich surface. And I'll take some of my yarn. I usually take about, I say about a foot and a half, two feet of yarn just to give me enough to work with and you're gonna thread it through cut a two foot about foot two foot piece and then thread it through and then what you're gonna do is go through these the top and just along the stitch line so where you work the brim on the other half the other half of the the other half 
the other side of the hat you're going to basically work into that same kind of stitches. You're going to try to do this even as you can and work on the very edge to the very corner. You're going to weave through, tie it, tie it a couple times. And then I just like to whip stitch across it. So what you're going to do is basically be sewing the whole top of the hat closed. So you're going to be flat, sewing it into one flat piece. And what I like to do is I try to hold my tail from where I tied it down along the top. So as I'm sewing it in, it sews that up too, so it's one less tail i got to sew in. Or at least try to sew in. And so you're going to sew along the whole bar the whole top of this until it's one complete, like, piece. And I'll meet you back here in just a minute. Okay, and now when you get to the end of this, stitching it up, I like to kind of, like, hold the hat down and kind of, like, snugly, like, secure the stitches to kind of give it that nice crisp edge. And at the end, I like to, before I tied off. I like to run this through a couple times on the corner and knot it just to make sure it doesn't come untied because I have a problem. <laughs> I have a problem with hats that come untied like I try to make sure to get it as dense and as secure as possible so I don't have any mishaps later on throwing it in the washer or getting it everyday use so I like to make sure it is double sturdy on the top and is not going to have any problems down the road. So I kind of weave the end in a little bit here and there oh, a couple different times. What you're going to do is make sure you cut off a little bit off the edge of it to have a small working tail to work back into your project. And so to finish this off you're going to Weave in the ends, and I just go through that spot that I put in a bunch of back and forth um, extra strain to keep the security of it. And it's gonna be kind of dense to get it through. Ooh, kind of dense. So it's nice securely in there and then you're going to cut as close to it without cutting it. Okay, and now you are complete with making the HP Kitty beanie. You're going to flip it right side, it, right side out and move that up. So now your hat's complete. And like I said, I like it a lot because it's like a nice subtle cat ear. It's not like sewn across or anything like any specific stitches to do. And when you put it on, it is going to stand up as you have it on to kind of give it those little tiny cat ears. It's really cute. I honestly, whenever I go out and about, let's say if I'm in a regular t-shirt or t-shirt and jeans or leggings, and I just want to add a little something, I just throw this cat on. But I hope you enjoy this pattern. If you like it, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe and message us in the comments. Also, if you go ahead and make one, if you'd like, you can tag us on the social medias. It'll be linked below. And I hope you guys have a magical day.